What's the good, Hum Squad? It's your boy, Hum Ziggy. We back here with another reaction. And hey, man, the beating down of Drake is still gonna continue because as you see what we got, we got another Luesta video. And this is titled, How Drake Destroyed His Ghost Rider's Life. Now, hey, as granted, let's be honest. Is Drake ever gonna live down the with with the new alleg alleg how's it go freaking allegations? It's, that trust me, I've heard even though I've heard the word, I don't know how to say it into the but I'm pretty sure it's allegations. Yeah, there we go. With the recent ones with the p the p ho the pedo files and such, the pedophile allegations and whatnot. What's the before those were ever a thing? The number one allegations Drake's always had was the ghostwriting one. So, especially after this now, oh yeah, Kendrick already made that shit be well known, and with the whole PDF, the PD files, shit. So hey, let's get it. So let's see how Drake actually ruined his life. Cause I thought it was daylight. Well, some say it's daylight, but who knows who it could actually be. But let's see what Luisa got to say about that. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on my socials up there. And without further ado, let's get into this. In 2015, during the feud between Drake and Meek Mill, a rapper named Quentin Miller was exposed to be Drake's ghostwriter. And while being outed as the man who wrote lyrics for a rapper who is as braggadocious, territorial, and petty as the Six God can lead to some unwanted attention, you would think that simply being affiliated with Drake's team would at least lead to a better lifestyle or some level of financial freedom. Maybe. However, the drama that ensued afterwards led to one of the most dramatic downfalls and is a story that many hip-hop purists rarely discuss. After he was exposed, Quentin Miller reached the lowest point in his life, instead of flourishing to his higher purpose as Drake might have hoped. My name is Luesta, and this is how Drake ruined his ghostwriter's life. Born on October 10th, 1989 in Atlanta, Georgia, Quentin Miller started writing raps in his teens while being homeschooled, going by the stage name Myla, and was good enough to eventually get his first signing with Epic Records at the age of 21. He was brought in by the artist Dream and Tricky. However, he was dropped after only three months because they believe he didn't have any star power and he had to butt heads with the A&R of the company. Without a degree, securing a job seemed impossible, especially because this was two years after the stock market crash of 2008. Eight, and the economy was still in recovery. Well, he's telling you he doesn't think you're a star in the middle. Of your yeah, bro, in the middle of this. In the middle of this. <laughs> so I'm like, bro, I'm like, I'm just. How can you go? So anyway, long story short, he, he, he hit Tricky. I'm in here trying to become a star. Shut the. Yeah, up. bro. Yeah. <laughs> so then Tricky just hits me. It's like, yo, you're not Red Zone. You're not Epic. You're not nothing. You going back? They sent my back. They made me wait like three, four weeks before I could get my car back. That was up, man. Y'all, man, y'all don't know. I was young, man. That hurt, man. That, that hurt. Things weren't looking too good for Miller, and with his daughter on the way... It's crazy that he was the ghostwriter and such, and he had bars like no other, but yet... Maybe, even though that was... Well, he was young in his career, so... But the fact that they came down on him hard like that, you know, did he? Kind of crazy. That hurt, man. That, that hurt. Things weren't looking too good for Miller, and with his daughter on the way, he had to find. And he had a, way a daughter on the way too. Meet. Eventually, he ended up finding a job at Publix in Atlanta, and was able to at least feed his family in the meantime. However, Quentin really hated his job, and was still putting work into his music on the side to see if he could get anything going. And that's when he got in contact with Drake's affiliates, Boy Wanda and Obi Brian, who both liked his pen game. They would send him a few beats, he would lay down some bars for them, but everything changed when he sent in 10 bands. And Wanda was like, yo, he's with this 10 band song. He's with this hard. So yeah, I was, I was really excited. I thought I was gonna have a Drake feature. Cause at the time, Drake was just doing random features. Anybody. For up and coming artists. Drake is fing with 10 bands, man. He's going crazy over here. Yeah, Drake had this one where nigga. And he's, well, maybe he still is or still isn't. But hey, at the time when Drake was just 
giving out random features to anybody and such, right? The minute, the, cause at the time, if you haven't go check out my video where I reacted to Drake's like the Drake feature curse and such by Louis again, I'm pretty sure I reacted to it. Drake was always on this run where if you gave him a, if you was given a feature by Drake and such, you would have been that song is gonna be fire without a shadow of a doubt, right? So hey. It's crazy. Just for just up and coming. And he was doing it with up and coming artists too. Bands, so he's going crazy already. I'm like, oh sh I sent him bands to a couple of my friends. Mm -hmm. Now I didn't know what a reference track was at this time. Mm -hmm. And at that point you were just making a record. I was just making songs. Yes. And plus when he said it, I'm thinking Trace gonna get on it. So I'm like, I'm not leaking you know what I'm saying? Like and then later I I was sent a clip and it was Drake saying it and I was like oh all right well hey yeah whatever and Quentin didn't expect Drake to actually hmm. rap the song but he was thrilled to work with such a major artist so this nigga literally stole the entire song damn Drake this man literally stole his song you can say if you put it just in simple terms like me and simple people like me he literally just stole his song. Wait. Quentin didn't expect Drake to actually rap the song, but he was thrilled to work with such a major artist. He even proudly represented OVO back in his home of Atlanta. He's getting flown out, having writing sessions, and begins to work with Drake to produce his fourth mixtape, If You're Reading This Is Too Late. And as we all know, when it came out, Drake was getting praised for making the best rap songs that year. Yeah. But what they didn't know was that they were actually praising a young guy from Atlanta. So. You get in the studio with Drake and you end up basically co-writing what became used to 10 bands, Legend and Six Man. Yeah. I also wrote on Bless. I also wrote on Bless too. That was when I first met Big Sean um, during that session. I felt like I was, you know, a part of this shit. Like, you know, Drake literally was looking me in my face like, yo, man. This album wouldn't be possible if it weren't for you. Like, you know, you really helped. You have no idea. Like, you saying this to a dude that was working in the bakery, you know what I'm saying? Like, I thought my dream was over with after tr tricking him, dropped me off, you know? Like, I was crying like a baby, you know? Cause hey, man. Hey, I, and the craziest thing is, most people are like, oh, men shouldn't be crying and such. Y'all need to be emo. It's basically like this. To me, for that narrative where men don't show emotions and whatnot, to me, that's stupid. Because at the end of the freaking day, whether it be a loved one passed or something happened to you, whatever the case may be, we all show our emotions no matter what. Whether it's happy, sad, angry, confused, whatever the case may be. We all show emotions. So to me, that narrative of men men should not be showing their emotions. Nigga, you imagine if you was in his situation where you thought you were signed to one of the best records at the time and such, Epic Records, right? You think you were going to be on a roll, you're going to be a star. But then you hear them saying about how, nah, nigga, you just, you ain't going to make it, you ain't this and that. And they dropped you and you have to go back to getting an actual job and such. Nothing's wrong with the actual job, but really think about it. You need to tell me you wouldn't be crying right then and there. I don't care who you is, male, male, female, don't matter. You don't, you damn right. Shit, if I, if I was in his situation, you damn right I'm crying. Because I thought my dream was over. But then I got a second chance. Shit. Yo, man, this album wouldn't be possible if it weren't for you. Like, you know, you really helped. You have no idea. Like, you saying this to a dude that was working in the bakery, you know what I'm saying? Like, I thought my dream was over with. After tr tricking him, dropped me off, you know, like, I was crying like a baby, you know, because I'm like, how the fuck else am I going to do this? You know, they they were the people that I knew, and I ain't have nobody else. You know? And you so had nobody it else? Felt like it was just one of the best times, you know? Yeah, felt like I was on the team. However, things would take a drastic turn for Miller and Drake fans after Meek Mill came into the picture. Mm. After teaming up with Drake on Rico for his 2015 album, Dreams Worth More Than Money, Meek Mill would put out a tweet alleging that Drake has a ghostwriter, saying, Stop comparing me to Drake too. He don't write his raps. Mm. That's why he ain't tweet about my album because we found out. Other artists know though. Lil Wayne and Nicki know. Ask them. They gon' act like they don't see them tweets. Meek was mad that Drake wasn't helping to promote his album. Mm. 
And people were saying that the line, the girl of your dreams to me is probably not a challenge in Rico, is a diss to Meek Mill because Drake has been very close to Nicki Minaj, who was dating Meek at the time. Mm. This was a pretty crazy revelation back then, since ghostwriting wasn't as popularized as it is today. True, cause let's be honest, at the time, we did not give a, we didn't even know about these types of shit. Honest to God, nobody even cared about who was ghostwriting this and that and the third at the time and such. Because all we cared about was how the music sound. Now? Oh, trust me. If somebody hears, if somebody is listening to a rapper and they hear that you didn't write your own shit, oh, you gon, you gon' get clumped. You gon' get, not to say bullied on, but people are gonna definitely put those allegations on you. Saying about how you don't write your own shit. Yeah, them them the types of ones where it as um as a rapper, you do not want to get. <laughs> this was a pretty crazy revelation back then since ghostwriting wasn't as popularized as it is today. It was mind blowing for fans to find out that one of the top artists in the game didn't write all their music. And this was a different case from that of a Dr. Dre or Kanye West, who are also known to use ghostwriters on their songs as they are more so producers and curators than they are as rappers. In a short while, the name Quentin Miller kept popping up and eventually a reference track for the song 10 Bands was leaked, shocking everyone even more because the song was very popular among the fans of If You're Reading This Is Too Late, and Drake had received a lot of praise for the writing on it. The whole Ghostwriter conversation was steaming hot with Drake and Quentin at the center of it all. Drake's producer and longtime friend, OVO40, put out a series of tweets defending Drake, saying, there's countless number ones and songs Drake has written for others, never mind himself. That's the funny part. So if someone wants to be upset that Drake made a great album, go for it. Get mad all day, lol. But don't ever question my brother's pen. I've spent maybe 30 minutes in a studio with Q, nice enough guy, very talented. If you're asking if Q contributed to if you're reading this, yes he did. You can also see that by reading the credits. Which is a point a lot of people seem to forget when saying an artist uses ghostwriters. When a writer contributes to a project, their name is usually slipped into the True. credits, therefore yeah. they aren't ghostwriting by definition. However, no one actually checks the credits for every single project to True. Cause let's be honest, not- hey. Not, like like you said, not everybody's gonna check who really writes their own shit. Because think about it, especially when it's an album. You really need to tell me that throughout the entire, throughout every album of any artist that you've listened to, you're gonna check the credits of every single one of the songs, saying if it was 20 songs on that album. You're gonna listen, you're gonna watch, you're gonna read every single song, every credits there. And see if that artist actually did write his own shit or had a number of people write it. You gonna check that? No. Cause I know why I ain't one. I'm just gonna listen to the song. When a writer contributes to a project, their name is usually slipped into the credits, therefore, they aren't ghostwriting by definition. However, no one actually checks the credits for every single project to police who had help and who didn't. Which is why this case was blown way out of proportion by Meek Mill. To make matters worse for Quentin Miller, he was now getting clowned online for some of the lyrics he wrote with people, saying that he ain't got the looks or money to be spitting lines like, the girl of your dreams to me is probably not a challenge. But Quentin would also put out a statement explaining his side of the situation, as well as downplaying the work he did on the album, saying, most of the project was done before I came into the picture. I remember him playing it for me for the first time thinking, why am I here? Like, what does he need me for? I am not and never will be a ghostwriter for Drake. I'm proud to say that we have collaborated, but I can never take credit for anything other than a few songs we worked on together. However, this would turn to be a big mistake because in trying to defend Drake, he would piss off Meek Mill. They caught me, uh, we, we was walking, we was in LA, Why you trying to piss off? Uh, I was walking to the Nike store and hmm. he approached me and this was really- Hey, it's kind of crazy that we're trying to, at the time, Meek Mill, before this whole Diddy, shit with Meek Mill and Diddy and that god almighty that audio tape and such of <laughs> no Diddy but Diddy literally Meek look the music can still be fire and all but my nigga the fa and the craziest thing is that man was going on a tweet tirade tirade or whatever like goddamn nigga focus on the music Forget the tweets. Stop tweeting and put out music. At the time when that 
shit, people are still making memes of that today and such. Of the whole meat meal getting by Diddy and such. So, hey. But before this and such, meat meal needed to be on this type of timing instead of what we got now. That's all I'm saying. This would turn to be a big mistake because in trying to defend Drake, he would piss off Meek Mill. They caught me, uh, we, we was walking, we was in LA, I, I was walking to the Nike store and he approached me and this was really my first time really talking with me and basically told me like, you know, he didn't appreciate the letter that I dropped and it made him seem like it was, he was a liar or whatnot and, and they stole off on me in the Nike store and man, I shed blood in the Nike store on Wilshire. They tried to get me in front of paparazzi at first. It, like, they, like we kind of called each other. I was getting out the Uber and we kind of called each other. And then he sent his man, he was like, yo, come come over here, me wants to talk to you. And I was just like, I don't want to go in front of paparazzi. Like, I don't want to do that. And so like, you know, they just followed me in the Nike store, yeah. From what we know now, Meek was allegedly instigated by Nicki Minaj, who felt like her man was being disrespected. So not only did he get abused online, he gets beat up by Meek's goons. And to make matters worse, Drake basically cuts him off after the entire incident. Quentin was dang. So, so, with, hold on, let me see, let him repeat it back for me so that way I can try to restate what he said. So not only did he get abused online, he gets beat up by Meek's goons. And to make matters worse, Drake basically cuts him off after the entire incident. So basically, after getting clowned online by many people and such about this shit, he then gets beat up by Meek Mill's goons and such in a Nike store. And after all that shit, what's the icing on the cake? To say the least, or in this worst case scenario, Drake cuts him off, saying that I don't associate with him. After all this shit that's happened, you just gonna instantly say, uh, he basically did like, deuces, like nigga, what? Nah, I would be heated at that time. I would be heated. And to make matters worse, Drake basically cuts basically him off said, after the entire incident. And Quentin was really disappointed in the silence from Drake's camp because he went to bat for them. For and real, still hung him out to dry. But he took solace. Imagine that you're trying to defend somebody from certain allegations of ghostwriting and whatnot, and instead of them trying to help you out, defend you and such, the same way how you defend them, they just said deuces. If, and if you don't think, I, boy. At that point, I wouldn't give a damn what they try to do to me. I try to defend y'all. And I hope the same thing in return. And what do I get? I get my ass clowned online. And worse, get my ass whooped because of by somebody and his by a rapper that you're beefing with his goon by his goons. And then you just gonna shove me and you just gonna, <clears throat> gonna kick me out of this shit? Nah. At that point, I'm exposing your ass. I don't give a damn what you try to do to me. You do me dirty, I'm going to do you ten times worse. Fuck you mean. Let me know if you would do the same. Part of his songs ...and believe that things would look up for him very soon. However, what he saw before him was more disappointment, making Quentin believe the industry had blackballed him. Man, I'm thinking like the phone is just about to just ring I, off the hook. I'm thinking, thing. you know, anytime anybody's involved with one song with this guy, <laughs> it's like everything, you know, and it's just like, it just wasn't like that. It's just like, it just did it. It just didn't happen. It was like, it was strange. To add insult to injury, Drake and Meek Mill would end up clearing their differences reuniting in 2018 for Meek's championship That's crazy. project. But Quentin's situation was somewhat expected because he outright told labels not to reach out to him. I'm not a writer and that's that's like the, the interesting thing and to all industry people out there and labels out there, like, please, I want y'all to know that I am not a writer. Don't invite me to your writer's camps. Like, that was a special situation that just, happened to happen it was an opportunity 
and you know we just happen to be on the same wave you see quentin suffers from the same problem that hinders artists with stronger pens in the industry just like partisan fontaine who wasn't happy when kanye exposed him as a ghostwriter quentin didn't uh, want was, his writing to overshadow his music from the label's perspective you know, he people was like quentin are more valuable in the background for their already established artists and are therefore less likely to receive opportunities since they could just keep boosting an already marketable artist true um, <laughs> Hey man, it's crazy that that's how the industry is, but hey, it is what it is. A five year anniversary of the release of the If You're Reading This Is Too Late album, Quentin will put out a video expressing his dissatisfaction for how things happened with his career. Drake and, and me, and his best friends now, they watch basketball games and do shows together, you know? So it's just like, what was that even for? What was all of that for? You know, like all the, the stress that it caused, you know? And I know it. Everybody else is able to move on because everybody else is career established and all that, but my career yeah. wasn't established. So the music game, labels, artists, whoever, take a chance on me. Take a chance on Quentin Miller, man. Y'all know I y'all know I do these records. Y'all know I got these records. I could do it in my sleep. Take a chance on me, man. Everybody want to kick me to the curb, man. Everybody want me to just play the background, and they just want to. Just uh, give me ideas for this person. Give me ideas for that person, man. Give me, give me the opportunity, man. Give me the ball, man. I see a lot of artists out here that I know for a fact I can box with, man. I can box with all these. With more and more time passing and with bills to pay, Quentin would continue lending his pen to other artists, and it was even revealed that one of the main reasons Meek Mill opened this can of worms in the first place was because Quentin had refused to write for him on multiple So occasions. this nigga, so be, so, cause in a way, so that's why he wouldn't want it to, so that's why he got his ass whooped. Not only if he's doing the lying shit, but because you could, so because he didn't want to write for you as well, you want to, nah. If that ain't some scummy shit, I don't know what is. What the fuck? So because I didn't want to write for you, you gonna beat my ass. Because that's really what it is about. Because I would just think he's lying on his name about Drake having ghostwriting and such, of him being his ghostwriter. But really... In a way, it could still be that, but then with another layer of, oh, because I didn't want to write for you? Oh, nah. Oh, so I should, so not only am I exposing your ass, Drake, but then I should be exposing Meek me, Mill's ass, too. Because you want to be that petty? Oh, nah, you, both of y'all can get it. I don't even, damn. I'm exposing both of y'all for that shit, then his pen to other artists and it was even revealed that one of the main reasons meek mill opened the main his can one of the main the first place was because quentin had refused to write for him on multiple occasions it was like maybe after the third time then i, I told drake about it and i was like man it's kind of weird man like he's, he's he's just pressing it so hard but i'm like turning it down bro like, i'm not trying to work with bro i'm trying to work with you and so he was like yeah that is weird and then meek was tweeting stuff before he tweeted my name he was tweeting like little sub stuff and me and Drake were like screenshotting and sending it to each other like yo you think he's talking about this yo you think he's talking about this and then next thing you know he says he puts it all out there and that just that just changed everything this shows Meek's entire statement about not tricking his fans being absolutely bullshit pretending to be the shining light of rap purity and public but only exposing the operation when they don't let you in is straight diabolical behavior not to mention hypocritical yeah. it reminds you of a kid who takes the ball home once they start losing although drake doesn't leave the situation either without any blame quentin turned down meek mill multiple times downplayed his involvement in writing drake songs got beat up and got publicly humiliated all because he wanted to be loyal to drake yeah at least i think about that because i didn't want to write for you and i was trying to be loyal to this motherfucker you gonna beat my ass up just because i didn't want to write up for you because not only i'm downplaying your allegations and such but i'm trying to be loyal but then this Nah, at this point, anybody who uses me, I don't care if it's you or you. I don't give if it's Drake or Meek. Both of y'all want to play me? Nah, I'm going to play with both of y'all asses. Got beat up and got publicly humiliated all because he wanted to be loyal to Drake. The least that Drake could do was keep working with him since most of his fans didn't care if Drake used ghostwriters. Maybe just because I was just a writer or, you know, I don't know. I, it was just like, I just, I just didn't matter. Just like, 
this guy, you know, even with, with drama and them, you know, like just kind of just throwing my whole life, you know, on the back burner, just like, uh, you know, whatever, just to get out of it, you know, like, but what about me? What about me taking care of my family? And, you know, the fact that I put my whole life into this, shit, I don't have no other skills. I ain't go to college, you know, like I make music. That's, that's my skill. What's even crazier is that he only made $30,000 for all the songs he wrote for Drake's oh, mixtape. Now, that isn't all really Drake's fault. Yes, he should have been Way paid more. more, but remember in the beginning when I said Clinton got dropped from Epic Records back when he was 21? Well, it turns out they dropped him but kept his publishing, meaning they basically took all of his royalty money for years until 2019 when he finally managed to leave the deal. Clinton's life after writing for Drake can be described as getting dealt a bad hand over and over again. Nigga, that's some scummy shit. So you drop me, but yet you want to still keep my publishing? Get the fuck out of here. Losing his leg in an accident in 2016 to almost getting scammed by Big Sean in 2022. I'm like, man, this is a real, this is a full circle moment, bro. He's like, yeah, bro, this is full circle, this is full circle. So I'm really like looking up to it. And then maybe like, two weeks, a week before the album drops, he's, he's just not responding to me at all. Then, like a week before, I'm in the studio with Hit Boy. I just randomly hear in a conversation with Hit, yeah, the album drop next week. I'm like, wait, what? I didn't even know. So then I start hitting him and then I'm getting texts from his manager. Now I'm only talking to his manager. I'm like, well, what, what happened? So I'm talking to the manager, then this come out. We still ain't signed the paperwork and nothing. My name was not on the credits. It was not on the credits for like the first three months so i'm blowing them up i'm like yo what's up man because i didn't know we was doing the ghostwriter thing because if that was the case i would have asked for some cash and they're just like nah man nah it's just uh until we get all the paperwork we can't get the credits we can't get everybody's name on the credits but i'm like but everybody else's name is on it despite now seeming to accept his role as a writer in the industry he faces controversy every time he tried to promote his work i've been still writing for people ever since you know i, I don't work with nas big sean jeezy Ty Dolla Sign, but like a bunch of other people. You know, I never really wanted to be a writer. And, you know, I, I, it's a it's an interesting sport, you know? I, I think I have more of a, a passion to, to just be creative. After this interview came out, some fans began to discredit Nas's entire catalog, while others were once again clowning Quentin for daring to mention that he worked with Nas, since he's generally revered for having one of the greatest pens in hip hop history. Nas's team had to reach out to Quentin, forcing him to clear things up while also explaining his perspective. I also mentioned other artists that I worked with, from g -Eazy to Jeremiah to Todd Dallasan. I mentioned other artists. Writers post their work and talk about their work all the time. You know why? It also helps with the business of writing. When people know that you are part of certain things, it makes people more prone to work with you. It's kind of part of the job. Naming your resume or your catalog or whatever, it kind of goes with it. But it's not that way with me because I just so happen to have had a situation with the biggest artist in the world and it turned into a whole fucking ghost writing scandal. And now I am the ghost. Now anytime people work with me, it's like I'm supposed to be a ghost. But I'm not a ghost. You don't make money being a ghost. They don't pay you. Artists don't give a f if you have money or not. They do not pay you. So if you don't get paid from being a part of this sh to get opportunities to get paid, why would I want to be a fucking ghost? If you work with Quentin Miller, you worked with Quentin Miller and you better be okay. We're saying that you work with Quentin Miller. Now, when it comes to the Nas situation, I was just, I pulled up on Hit Boy. That was a, a situation with Hit Boy. I'm in the room. I bounce some ideas out. There we go. Clear it up. I just bounce some ideas. Couple ideas went. That's all that happened with the Nas. But I am not a fucking ghost. I am not a ghost. Again, being forced to downplay his involvement, just like the Drake situation. Nowadays, Quentin Miller is still trying to make strides in the industry, despite being hurt so many times. In fact, he recently popped up on Kanye's well-received Vultures album as a writer, and had been spotted with his crew in the months leading up to its release. Hey man, all I can say is, if you ever thought of being a ghostwriter for the industry, or any sorts of way, <laughs> with this type of shit, don't. But yeah, with this shit, this just keeps on proving that sometimes, nowadays, it's questionable to want to collab with Drake. Because before this whole thing, even before Kendrick thing, 
you used to always want to collab with Drake because people always saying, oh, can you just imagine if I collab with Drake? Yeah, people will be excited about that, especially up and coming rappers. But now, not so much, especially after this, after this beef with Kendrick and such. But hey, man, shout out to Lil Waste on a great video, man. Y'all let me know. Y'all let me know of your opinions of this down in the comments below. Been your boy Homer Ziggy signing out. Stay positive. Keep the vibes up. I'm out.